changes every six, ten months. And at that time we had a Persian exhibition of Persian art. And that was the upstairs gallery. The downstairs gallery is the main collection of the museum. Its function is to be pluralistic interpretation. The idea of the main gallery is to tell you what is the Muslim contribution to human knowledge, to human heritage. But the upper one changes. And we had one that was Persian art. And Parwes Tanavali was one of them who had designed this statue, and we liked it so much that we made it perfect. What's so nice about this statue? Well, it's a Persian word which says hitch. Hitch means nothingness. So the statue expresses nothingness. It is made up of three Persian letters. And he's arranged the letters so that it looks like an iconic human. Right? An iconic human. And now it's supposed to be nothing. What is nothing? Well, if you went to the Rumi's exhibition, Rumi you has a poem about nothing. He says, we all come from nothing. Take a good look at us. We are nothing. Muslims have 99 attributes, names. Oh, there's more than 99 names, but at least there are 99 that are used to explain the characteristics of God. And one of them is nothingness. And again, it says, God is not, not nothing. Let me explain that. It doesn't make much sense, does it? Let me use one of the terms that is familiar. Like happiness. God is compassionate. God is not, not compassionate. God is not, not merciful. See what I'm saying? God is not, not merciful. Only God can be not, not merciful. You and I can be merciful, but we cannot be not, not merciful. See what I'm saying? So God is not, not nothing. So let's look at the statue, which is nothingness, right? I stand there and I see myself as a mirror of myself. If I turn around and stand that close, that close, and you can come around and ever stand, I am now shorter and fatter. Right <laughs> when I stand right that close, and you can come out guys and have to try that out. <laughs> I now stand there, very close, and look at myself. I am thin and tall. I am a skinny little fellow, and I am much taller. Right up there. And now, if I stand there, you stand there, what do you see? You see yourself upside down. And you see yourself? Multiple. Hey, this is supposed to be nothing. If I call you nothing, you might call it. You are something. So you can see how this statue, which is nothingness, is more than nothingness. Well, we like this idea. And it became a statue. So this is a statue that 
And the new leaves as they come out are nice and beautiful. So this is a rose that survives to grow. It only has, and there are not many around at the moment, there are tiny little roses with five petals and a very, very strong perfume. A beautiful, strong perfume. And that's all they are. So they are, but they bloom together and then they bloom back and then they bloom again so these will bloom in and out and after they bloom they become rose hips and as the rose hips dry they become even stronger red and if you come here in the fall you will have rose hips that are really red rose hips one thing that the english and the Chinese have in common. One thing that the English and Chinese have in common is what? Tea. Ah, somebody got it. Yes, they make rose hip tea. Rose hip tea is made from these rose hips. And it's a nice, gorgeous tea, by the way. The only difference is it takes about four or five minutes to brew. It's not a quick brew, but it makes a gorgeous tea. The Persians in particular, and so do the Pakistanis, make rose water in the summer. And it's a nice cool drink made from the petals, the rose water. So you can see that this is a rose that grows all the way right to that wall. That's how many roses we have. And it's a beautiful rose that goes through and through and all the way back. Okay, all right, let's move on to the next plant. Let me start with this one. This one is called service berry. That is generic name, service berry. And if you look at this plant, it is nothing else but sticks. Can you see? Now imagine this plant in winter. This is all snow and how many? All the way. And what does it look like in winter? Beautiful. It is just a beautiful plant in winter and looks gorgeous in winter. Then what happens is, each of these berries, and see all the berries, see how many there are dried up on this. Can you see all the dried up? How many? A thousand? More? Each one has four petals. This big white petals. And what does that look like? This is what it looks like as it warms up in the fall. Really gorgeous plant. See how beautiful this plant is. Then comes, then comes this time of the year and in June, last week of June, first week of July, you have tons of berries that are ripe and are edible by birds and by tour guides only. <laughs> and the reason I said tour guides only is because they are the only ones that know that they are edible. <laughs> and we come here, myself included, with a whole bag. And we fill the bag. And it makes gorgeous jam because they are blueberry size, sour. Think of a sour reddish berries and you put a little sugar in them. Sweet and sour. The English call it Juneberry jam. Yeah, this tree in England is called Juneberry. And it's called Juneberry jam. And actually, if you are at the Heathrow Airport next time, you can buy it at the Heathrow Airport. That's how famous it is in England. In Canada, it is often called Sourberry or Saskatoonberry. The only problem, unlike cherries that you can pick throughout the year, or most of the summer, this are only ripe for two weeks. After two weeks, they dry up and they fall and they die. 
How many gets eaten by the birds and the tour guides? I would say less than one tree. How many trees are there? We don't manage to eat one tree. Next time, come here in last week of June, first week of July. You're welcome to feed yourself. <laughs> and they don't last more than two weeks. But they are packed with, for those two weeks. They're really gorgeous berries. And that's what you get from them. Okay. The berries are gone. Now what? Well, these leaves will soon dry and go red. And the tree will look like this. See the tree red? Red trees. And can you see this is Star Trek? Star Trek was used, shot here, and see the two trees. Right? These are your Juneberry trees. Right? And Star Trek was made here. And that's because it doesn't look like it's Earth. Hmm. It looks like you're an outer planet with red leaves trees. So Star Trek is making use of this and making you feel you're not on Earth anymore. Yeah, Paradiso. <laughs> They've got the idea. Another movie that was made here, this is still Star Wars, or Star Trek rather, this is Star Trek. On mine it says, this is Star Trek episode number as well, so. The next movie that was made here was Matt Damon, Downsized. Can you see that? Can you see the museum and can you see the front door of the museum? Can you see what it says? Istanbul. And if you can read Turkish, can you tell me why that sign, Aga Khan Museum, is not there? It's something in Turkish. It's no longer an Aga Khan Museum anymore. And that was Matt Damon's movie shot here. So this place has become quite beautiful and used for productions because of the beauty. And that's this one tree has become so famous. Well, the next tree I want to talk about is this one. Have a look at this one. Its flowers are, see purplish, tiny little purple flowers. And then those ones are white. So purple, white, purple, white, purple. So the horticultural has designed it. So these are all purples. Any idea what you're looking at? Anybody any idea? There is, a, there is a song by Simon and Garfunkel, Scarborough Fair. I'm going to Scarborough Fair. Parsley, sage, rosemary and pine. Remember me to the one who lives there. She once was a true love of mine. Parsley, sage, rosemary and pine. This is time. Is it? You're looking at time. Mm. Time is what you use as a spice. You can crush it and smell it. You can eat it. Right? It's time. It's quite a famous spice. Well, historically, time was used by the Romans, given to the maiden. The maiden would sorry, give it to the soldier for bravery. It was used by the Greeks. They put it under the pillow to ward off evil. It was used by the Turks in their bathhouses because of the nice smell. Mm. And Ibn Sina. What? Anybody knows who Ibn Sina is? Ibn Sina. Ibn Sina. Nobody? Oh, the first medical textbook? Ah, he wrote the first medical textbook. Yes, the canon of medicine. He was from Uzbekistan, you're right. He was from Uzbekistan. And Ibn Sina, or Avesina, Ibn Sina died in 1054. 1054. What year is this? 2023. 1054. More than a thousand years ago. And in his book, the Canon of Medicine, five volumes. Canon of Medicine is five volumes. And in his book, he writes, if you take time, crush it with a little bit of water, and if you have a skin rash or a bleeding skin or a skin boil, 
tie a bandage with that and then dry bandage over it. It heals much more quickly. True or false? Well, next time you are at the grocery store, pick up a bottle of Listerine. Mouthwash. No, not the mint version. The original Listerine. The original version. Look at the ingredient. The first ingredient is thymol. Today we use thyme as a mouth antiseptic. Thousand years ago, the word antiseptic didn't even exist. He was using this as an antiseptic. Now you know how important his book is. How important is his book? Well, the I want to talk about is these trees. See these trees? These trees, if I told you their names, you would recognize the tree. But before I give you the name, let me just explain. Meta, meta means change. And the name of those trees are meta sequoia. Sequoias, people know what sequoias are? No? What if I said California redwood forest? Now you recognize them. That's a meta sequoia. The largest and the tallest trees in North America, in the world, are the sequoias. How big do they grow? 150 feet. 150 feet. How wide are they? I have seen trees that were being hugged by five kids and they couldn't even hug half the tree. I have seen trees where they've cut the trunk and a car has gone through it. This is how big those trees are. These meta sequoias are not California sequoias because the California sequoia Bright red. Sometimes they call this lipstick leaf because it's that red, the lipstick red thing. And if you want maple syrup, yes, it will give you maple syrup. It is not the cultivated maple that is used for baking syrup, but this tree still has syrup, syrup in it, and wild syrup is made from this maple. So it's quite a Canadian tree, very well established all over. Okay. Let me look at this trunk. Can you see it's peeling? I say peeling trunks are usually birch. So this is birch. But then, look at this. And this is not birch. This is a tree that Ontarians go to parks in the spring to see it flower. Any idea what tree it is? Cherry blossom. This is cherry cherry blossom. blossom. But cherry blossom trees grow like this, don't they? If you see the cherry blossom tree, they don't grow like a willow, a crying willow, right? What this guy has done is, have a look. This is birch, this is cherry blossom, and he's put cherry blossom on birch. So he's taken the birch, cut it, and stuck cherry blossoms. And now, because he stuck the cherry blossom like this, the cherry blossom grows. It took him three, four years to do.
ਦਾ ਜ਼ਿਕਰ ਹੈ